Welcome back everyone, Mingpu here, and a few days ago I made a video talking about how to cool the Nitro 5. In one of the methods I mentioned going into the advanced power settings. Well, I just wanted to briefly go over the other settings just in case you wanted to adjust them to your liking. So to get there, move to the bottom right hand side of your desktop and right click the battery icon. Select power options change plan settings, then click change advanced power settings. You will now be at the advanced power settings tree. First up we have the hard disk option. This will allow your hard disk to power down after a specified time of hard drive inactivity. This setting will not affect solid state or NVMe drives. Having your hard drives automatically turn off after being idle can help save energy and extend battery life. When you or anything tries to access the drive that has been turned off, there will be a delay of a few seconds as the hard drive automatically spins back up and is turned back on before being able to access. Next we have Internet Explorer. Expanding the tree you will see JavaScript timer frequency. You have two settings to use here maximum performance and maximum power savings. This will allow you to speed up or slow down JavaScript performance on web pages when browsing with Internet Explorer. More than likely, you will have to set this to maximum performance. If you need to save battery, the maximum power savings option should be used. Just be aware that JavaScript animations and execution might run a little slow. Also, some articles have stated that they were able to reduce 5% of the total battery load. Take note that I don't know if this will have any effect on the Microsoft Edge browser. So you will have to tinker around with it and see if it affects it in any type of way. Next we have desktop background settings and inside we have slideshow. The settings that can be selected are paused and available. Available lets your background change normally and you'll have other settings in the Personalize tab. When Pause is selected, naturally the slideshow will be paused. This is also helpful for saving battery. Next we have Wireless Adapter Settings. Opening the tree we see Power Saving Mode. There are four settings to choose from. Maximum Performance helps achieve maximum wireless performance with no power savings. Low power savings realizes minimum power savings. Medium power saving helps balance between the performance and power savings based on network traffic. And maximum power saving can achieve maximum power savings. If you find that using any of the power saving modes causes connection problems, switch to maximum performance. Next up is sleep. Expanding sleep we see four different options to adjust. Sleep after lets your computer go to sleep when you are not using it. Allow hybrid sleep is a combination of sleep and hibernation states. It is designed to save your system state to your memory as well as your hard disk and quickly wake up your machine when you need to resume your work. Hibernate after lets your computer hibernate when not being used. This can save battery and your system state is stored in the hard disk. The last is allow wake timers. There are three settings to choose from. Disabled of course means that your PC will not be disturbed and will continue to sleep hibernate. The enabled setting will let your machine be awakened by system tasks such as defrag, scan disk, etc. Selecting important wake timers only will allow your machine to be awakened by important system updates from Windows. It will even allow your machine to reboot. Next up is USB settings. Inside there is USB selective suspend setting. That's a tongue twister. Anyway, you can either enable or disable this. When enabled, your machine can power off USB devices connected to your system when you're not using them. Using this will contribute to saving a little battery power. Reading around, if you disable this and leave your USB devices connected, they won't go into suspend mode and your machine will use more power. So just be aware of that. Next, we have Intel graphics setting and inside there is Intel graphics power plan. 
This is tied to your Windows power plan and the settings are maximum battery life, balanced and maximum performance. Next up is PCI Express and expanding the tree, there lies link state power management with three settings. This controls the active state power management protocol, which is used to manage serial based PCIe devices. When these devices aren't doing much work, your computer can place them into a low power state to reduce power consumption. Selecting off will have the least latency, but no power savings. Selecting moderate power savings will have less energy savings, but the time to recover from the sleep state will be much shorter. Selecting maximum power savings will have the least impact on battery, but the time required to wake up from the sleep state will be much longer. Next up is processor power management. Expanding the tree, we have three options. Minimum power state lets you pick the percentage of energy that will be allotted to the processor. The selected percentage will function when the processor is idle or performing minimal tasks. The system cooling policy has two settings to set your cooling policy. With active selected, Windows will increase the fan speed to cool the processor and only reduce the processor speed if it can't cool the processor enough with the fan. This results in higher performance. With passive selected, Windows will slow the processor speed to cool it down and only turn on the fan if it needs to cool the CPU down further. This results in lower performance, but less power usage and longer battery life. Maximum processor state lets you set the highest percentage your processor will go. Setting this to a lower percentage may result in significantly better battery life, but possibly lower performance. It can also be used to lower thermals when undervolting is not an option. Moving to display and expanding, we see turn off display after. This setting controls the number of minutes Windows waits before turning off the display. If you're worried about saving your screen, this is a better option than using a screensaver. Next up is multimedia settings. These settings are very useful if you are sharing media in your home or have a machine set up as a media server. We have three options in here with the first being when shared media. Selecting prevent idling to sleep will keep your machine from sleeping while you're streaming files or the machine is being accessed. Selecting allow the computer to enter away mode does a wealth of things. Shuts down the video signal to the port, mutes all system audio, blocks HID and PS2 input devices, puts the CPU into adaptive mode, and much more. Moving on down, we have video playback quality bias. This setting is useful to the devices that can play HDR videos. There are two settings to choose from. If you select video playback power savings bias, then the OS will play HDR videos as SDR. Selecting the video playback performance bias will retain the image quality and will consume more power. Just under this, we have when playing video. This is used to specify the energy optimization that is used by your system's video playback. To achieve the optimum video quality while playback, choose Optimize Video Quality. Choose the Balance option when you prefer the laptop to keep you entertained as well as conserve a little battery. To get the most battery savings while watching videos, select the Optimize Power Savings setting. Lastly, we have the Battery section. Expanding the tree, we have a whopping seven different options to use. Critical battery notification will allow Windows to show you a notification when your battery reaches a critical low level. It's either on or off. Critical battery action will let Windows take action when your battery reaches a critical level to prevent your machine from suddenly dying due to a very low battery. You can choose from sleep, hibernate, or shut down. Low battery level controls the battery level that Windows considers low. For example, if you set it to 8%, Windows will show you a low battery notification and take the low battery action at 8% battery remaining. Critical battery level controls the battery level that Windows considers critical. Just like the one before, if you set it to 5%, Windows will show you a critical battery notification and take the critical battery action at 5% battery remaining. 
Low battery notification shows you a notification when its battery reaches the low level. This can be set on or off. Low battery action lets Windows take action when the battery reaches the low level. Settings that are available are do nothing, sleep, hibernate, and shutdown. Reserve battery level controls the battery level where Windows enters reserve power mode. You can set the percentage battery at which point the laptop will flash an alert. It will work even if the low battery notification is off. You'll generally want to save your work at this point or plug in. This is your last chance before complete shutdown. Anyway, we finally made it to the end and I hope that you now have a bit more of an understanding of the settings inside the Windows 10 power plan. If you like the content, please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, Mean Poo, out.